armor is typically something that a soldier wears to protect them on the battlefield from bodily harm, weapons like swords, knives, arrows, bullets, shrapnel, etc. Armor has been around as long as recorded history. Even early cavemen used leather and bone armor prior to any recorded history. Leather and bone changed in the Bronze Age and in the Iron Age and even on to carbon composite and Kevlar. Personal body armor is significant and many argue that it's, as armor technology increased, so does weaponry. Some argue that armor technology drives the advancement of weapons. I believe that both go hand in hand. The Bronze Age from 3000 to 1200 BC it was the smelting of copper alloy with tin and other metals that allowed people to really start to forge armor. The Mycenaean Greece civilization saw some of the furthest advancements. Even the advancement of the cuirass, which is typically a full piece of metal guarding the torso. From 1600 to 1100 BC saw some of the first plate armor. The Greeks were advancing agriculture, engineering, and military further than any civilization prior to them. The Greeks created plate armor that was the first of its kind, even going as far as adding artistic touches, showing the vain body image. Armor was often buried with the owner in Greece and Italy. The Bronze Age brought about body armor and saw its popularity rise in the Iron Age. In early Eastern armor, around 500 BC, in China and Japan started to evolve into iron plates connected by leather. This originated in Korea and this Eastern armor spread to Japan by 500 BC. Eastern Asia also saw the advancement of scale armor with small pieces of metal held by leather underlying looks similar to dragon scale. The most popular being the Lamalure armor, which is small pieces of iron held by leather lacing. The Ming period plate armor started taking on a bigger role, typically for leaders, warriors of importance. By 300 BC, chain mail started dominating with the Romans and the Celts. These different armors dominated the world with iron and chain for the Roman Celts and iron plates and leather in Eastern Asia. And it really stayed that way until an additional thousand years saw incredible advancements in armor technology. By 1300 AD, carburized case hardening technologies had transformed the manipulation of iron alloys. However, the Black Death slowed production of the cuirass, but it was 1400 to 1700 that saw some of the biggest advancements in body armor. By 1400, full body plate armor dominated the battlefield. Heavy cavalry and full armor could not be stopped for centuries. And this type of armor is typically what we think of when we think of medieval knights. But it was the 17th century and the Age of Enlightenment that included the invention of the firearm that again began to transform armor on the battlefield. As soon as muskets and dragoons started coming around and being significant weapons, it was England that produced the first bulletproof or musketproof armor which typically was two layers of metal plates with some kind of inner layer. As bullets became harder hitting, so did the advancement of plate armor, especially in the torso. But the effort never stopped. 1900 saw the fastest advancements of body armor protecting against bullets. World War I saw the development of ballistic nylon. However, it wouldn't stop a bullet, but it would stop shrapnel. It was in 1923 that protective armor garments started to really dominate the police force, really only protecting upwards of calibers of the 38 Special. By the 1970s, it was DuPont's Kevlar ballistics that truly started to transform the battlefield. Manipulation of this Kevlar goes from many levels of body armor, and even today the advancement is continuing for police and military all over the world. As we continue to see the advancement of weapons on the streets and the battlefield, we'll continue to see the advancements a body armor, and as evil always shows its ugly head, good must always rise against it. And it's weapons like body armor that allow us to do that. Thank you for watching this episode of the History of Weapons. Don't forget to click subscribe and the bell to get updates on future videos.